So I recorded this whole video for you and then I didn't have the microphone on. So there was no noise for the entire thing. I'm going to move myself over here. No, maybe up here. So I'm out of the way. Um, yeah. So we're going to try this again. Um, I have been making repeating patterns in Canva. So this is the last pattern that I just made for myself. And what I'm going to do is actually use it on a composition notebook to print out for, um, my reading journal. So this is my, this is my composition notebook cover that I'm going to print and see what I can't do with that. And this is just a graphic that I found in Canva along with my pattern and then a rectangle. And I did it in the size of, um, a composition notebook, which is 7.75 by 9.75, I think. Um, I'll do a tutorial on that some other time. So this is the one that I just made for us on video and then um, <laughs> didn't have any sound for it. So we're going to recreate something similar. Um, and then this is just the process of actually making the pattern. And you can see that it's um, transparent and then I made it so that you can change the colors in the background so that you could have different styles to go with it. So what we're going to do first is start a new design. So I'm going to go over here to Canva and just tell it create. And then I'm going to tell it customize size or custom size. And the first thing you do is change your units. Cause if you start typing in here with it in a unit that you don't want, then you just have to come back over here and retype. So to save time, just come over here and switch it to inches. And I'm going to do 12 by 12, which I've already done. I'll just do it again. Once you've done it a few times, it saves some of some of your last presets. Okay. So now that you have a 12 by 12, then you're just going to go over to your elements and start finding designs that you like. Um, you can go through and search all the designs and just put them onto your paper. If you've saved designs in the past that you like, you can find those by clicking on project. And then if you go over here to folders and then starred, it will show you all of your previous um, patterns and things that you liked. This one's kind of cute. Maybe we'll do something with this one. Um, I'm going to size that down and then I'm going to go look at this artist and see if they have anything else that I like. So to do that, I'm going to right click on it and go to info and then it shows me view more by and then the name of the artist. Okay. So this is all the things that this artist has made. I'm going to search cat first just to see what we've got that goes with this oh there's some cute little halloween cats and ghosts that might be kind of fun okay so, um i'm gonna do a few of these ghosties and maybe we'll just make the whole thing like cat halloween i still think we need a few of the ghosts to go in there too though the ghost cats this one's cute um, there was one up here that was like kind of, yeah, laying down flying. It kind of matches this one laying down on the book. So I might do that. And then this one up, um, I kind of like the skull with the moon better. And then this, let's see, put this one here, that one there, and this one there. You don't have to quadrant them out. I'm just kind of doing that just to kind of keep track of my design. Um, my brain has a hard time going random. So if that's the case, once I put other stuff on there, it makes it a little bit more random. Okay. But if you feel like you need more things on there to fill the space, then by all means add, add till you're happy with your style. Okay. Now I'm going to go back out here to elements and I'm going to search dots because there were these ones that I had been using that I really liked. And I think I'm going to add some stars too, because I did some stars on this other pattern that I did, the spooky book pattern. And I'm actually going to go up here and just steal those right from the design. But when I searched it, I just searched stars and um, I'm just going to randomly fill those in everywhere. Also, the I'm holding down my option key on my keyboard and then just clicking and dragging that. And that's what duplicates it super fast and easy. You can also just hit D for duplicate and then rearrange them as needed. I work in Illustrator a lot and that's one of the shortcuts for Illustrator and it's just something that I do frequently. You'll also see me accidentally like size these in a weird way where it actually like starts to cut into the, the image and it's because I'm holding the shift key and I don't need to, but I do it anyway. Okay. Um, I'm going to have some of these go off the page so that it's just a single star. 
I could also just crop. If you double click on an image and then crop, zoom in there, and then just grab these little toggles in the corner, you can crop parts out of the image. I didn't quite get that last star out. I'm trying to do it without taking off the points though. And then that way it's a little bit smaller and we can use it to fill some of these narrower spots. I do have the dots to fill in though too. And I'm going to switch those colors to something probably from one of the cats. Actually, I kind of like, oops, I'm still in the star. I'm looking at that, but not actually editing it. I think I like the pink. And same with this. I just kind of put some of them off the page so that they're filling in those spaces that um, are going to actually be really open when we get to the next process. Okay. So just having some go off the page, but as long as they're not being cut off by the edge of the page, you're good. I'm going to duplicate this one and then crop it down to, I like the wonky dot that's right there. And then I'm going to duplicate that a few times and I'll probably change the color of it. Let's go with, there's not much green on there. Let's go with this green here. Okay, and once you have your pattern pretty much filled out, just remember there's going to be some blank spaces maybe when we put this together. Um, so I don't want to say more is better, but at the same time, anything like right here, when it matches up with it right up here, it's going to be a little bit of a blank spot. So fill in where you can. Okay, so that's our graphic. Next thing we're going to do is over here in your apps, I'm going to delete this one really quick just so that I can search it with you. You're going to click on apps. And then you're going to search image. And when you do that, if you haven't used it before, it's going to show up right here. It's called design to image. If you have used it, it should be over here in your list. Um, and then you just click on that and it puts it over here in your apps list. Okay. And what I want it to do is convert the image to a PNG so that I can use it as an image on the next couple pieces of my project. So it says PNG and I'm going to slide this all the way up to max so that it's DPI is as high as possible. That way, if you're using it as a print on demand, it's, um, it's better quality. Okay. And then I'm going to export it. And what this does is it puts it into your uploads folder over here, but it also makes it available right here. So while that's thinking, I'm going to add a page. And then once it pops up, I am going to click on this and put it in the center of my page. And then I'm going to copy it just so that I've got it on my keyboard or on my clipboard. And I'm going to go over here to our elements again. I'm going to close out of the dots and I'm going to scroll down until you get to the grids. And I want this top and bottom image grid first. And I'm going to pull these edges in so that they're not off the canvas because I don't want any of my designs getting cut off. Okay. And then I'm going to change the spacing down to zero. And what that does is, I don't know if you noticed it, but there was this white gap right here in between the two image boxes. We don't want that. So make it zero and then click on the image somewhere and grab this and then just drop it into one of the graphics boxes. Then paste your other one and drop it also. Then I'm going to double click and drag that to the top inside that box. Double clicking means you're kind of like changing the way it's showing through that graphic box. And I'm going to grab this one and drag it down to the bottom. Okay. So now you should have your two images ready to go. And if you notice like this little ghosty cat's tail gets cut off up here, but you can see that it's going to get replaced down here. Okay. So that's part of our repeating pattern and we're on the right track. Okay. Um, one thing to check. I don't remember if I hit transparency when I did that. Let's go look. You want your background to be transparent. And one way to check that would be to, I'm just going to throw a rectangle out here and move it to the back and see if I can see it. I'm going to move my face to the back. I did not. Okay. So I messed you up on that one. Let's go back for just a second. Um, when you're converting that image, this box right here, transparent background needs to be clicked. Okay. So I'm just going to resend that one one more time. Um, okay. So you've got your, your graphics up here. We've gone over to the element that says design to image and then double check that you, you're on transparent right here. You want a transparent background. Otherwise you won't be able to change the background of this to other colors for different themes. If you are okay with white, it's not a big deal, but it's a big deal if you want different colors. Okay. Export it one more time. Um, while that's thinking, I'm going to go do 
actually, we'll just do that one more time. And I just threw those out there twice, which is actually okay. Um, back over to my elements, down to the grid, resize. And once you've done this one time, you can, you can copy and paste this template multiple times and not have to go back and grab these images from the grid and change the spacing and all that. Like save this like process and then just reinsert your images each time. Okay, so that one goes there. This one goes here. Drag that to the top. Drag this to the bottom. And now it should be, and I'm just going to double check, throw a rectangle out there, and then tell it to go to the back. And it is, okay? So then I'm just going to undo and delete that. And the reason we do that is so that you can make put a square in the background later and change the background color. Okay, so now we go back over to our designs and we're going to convert to image ping slide this all the way up transparent background we now want page three or two so i'm just going to say deselect all page two done export okay so once that's done then i'm going to add it to the current page and i'm actually going to did it do it? It's kind of slow thinking. It's still processing that image. I did it one time and then I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go over to my elements. I'm going to do side by side this time. Same thing with the spacing. Same thing with my edges. Bring them all down to my canvas so that they're right on the edge. And you'll notice there's this like fine white line, but when you zoom in, that white line actually disappears. So I think it's just showing you that there's two images there while you're zoomed out. Um, cause I have not been able to get it to, um, show me when I'm zoomed in. And then when I actually go to fix it, like, or when I download the actual graphic, it's fine. So put each of your images into the box, slide one to the left and we'll, the left one to the left, the right one to the right. And now you should have this image, um, it's just getting a little bit smaller each time. And it's sh like, see how of our dots are kind of up against the edges and our little tail is curling around. Okay. So this is actually, once you've done it once for the top and bottom and once for the left and right, that is your, that is your graphic. So we're going to export it one more time using the app, the design to image, and we're going to convert to image and slide this all the way up. Transparent. We want page three this time. So all pages, page three, done. And then th what this is going to do is give us the one that we actually put in quarters on here that's transparent, and then we can change our colors in the background. So export. And when I say like the colors in the background, what I mean is um, like on this one over here that I did, and then I just put a rectangle with color in the background, okay, on each one. And like this one's pink, this one's green, blue, and orange. And then this one's just transparent so that you could put any color you wanted behind it. And then I can export those that way. Okay, so I'm going to put our design on the page. And I'm going to put this up in the top. And I'm going to drag it until I get these guidelines that show that I am one quarter of the page. And then I'm going to duplicate it and put the other one on the other side. Highlight both of those by holding the shift key and duplicating it one more time and dragging those to the bottom. So now we have this super cute pattern. And if you duplicate this and then put a rectangle on there. So remember R for rectangle. And I'm just going to make this the whole size of the, the page. You can also just change the background of the slide, but I'd like putting a rectangle back there so that I can mess with it easier. Um, and then I'm going to send this to back. Okay. And we lost our dots because that, that background is the same color as my dots. So I'm going to just cut this one for just a second with the command X key, which means it's on my clipboard and it'll go right back where I want when I paste. And I'm going to change the background color to, let's just go with the green and see what that does. Okay. And then you just duplicate that page. X again, click the square, change the color. See how quick and easy that is? So then you can have it in all the different colors that you want. Duplicate the page. X, let's do like kind of a cream color this time. Well, that's cute. Okay, 
So I hope you enjoyed that and you've learned lots of things about creating patterns. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if there's anything else you'd like to see me do in Canva, also let me know in the comments and thanks for watching. Thank you.